U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited Israel on Tuesday after stops in Saudi Arabia and Jordan amid efforts to reach a peace deal in Gaza. The top U.S. diplomat met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, privately and then with the U.S. and Israeli delegations. According to readout from the U.S. State Department, the sites discussed ongoing efforts to reach an immediate ceasefire in Gaza as part of a hostage deal and emphasized that it is Hamas that is standing in the way of a ceasefire. The U.S. diplomat said the time is now for a deal to bring about a ceasefire in Gaza and free the remaining hostages held there. Blinken called on Hamas to accept the deal. Blinken reiterated his country's clear position that Israel should not launch a military incursion into the southern city of Rafah without effective plan to make sure that civilians are not harmed. The top U.S. diplomat also met Israeli President Isaac Herzog in Tel Aviv. We are determined to get a ceasefire that brings the hostages home and to get it now, and the only reason that that wouldn't be achieved is because of Hamas, Blinken said during the meeting with Herzog. The proposed deal between Hamas and Israel reportedly involves a 40-day ceasefire and the release of more than 30 Israeli hostages in exchange for many more Palestinian prisoners. Blinken later visited Israel's Ashdod port, about 30 kilometers north of Gaza, where he hailed Israel for making concessions to reach a hostage and ceasefire deal. Blinken later visited key border crossing Karim Shalom that has been central to getting aid into Gaza. US claims that Russia ramps up weapon production faster than ever with Chinese support. Russia has produced munitions, missiles, tanks and armoured vehicles at a faster pace over the last year than at any time in its modern history, including during the Cold War, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said during a conversation with World Economic Forum President Borge Brend. How has it been able to do that? Blinken asked, because it's getting massive inputs of machine tools, microelectronics, optics, mostly coming from China. 70% of the machine tools, 90% of the microelectronics are coming from China. Now, these are dual use items, but we know very clearly where so many of them are going. Blinken highlighted the dual challenge posed by China's support. It not only allows Russia to sustain its military actions against Ukraine, but also helps rebuild its defense industrial base. At the very time that Russia is seeking better relations with countries in Europe, it's also fueling the greatest challenge to European security since the end of the Cold War, he added. As I shared with my Chinese colleagues, you can't have it both ways. The US has been actively engaging with China to discourage support for Russia's military efforts since the conflict with Ukraine began. Unlike Iran and North Korea, which directly supply weapons to Russia, China's contributions are more subtle but equally critical, offering invaluable support to the Russian defense industry and helping it dodge sanctions through various export controls and measures. German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius also noted Russia's increased production, suggesting that it exceeds the needs for its conflict with Ukraine and is likely aimed at restocking military depots. In February 2023, China proposed a peace plan to stop the war in Ukraine, which called for direct negotiations between Moscow and Kiev without any notion of Russia withdrawing its troops from occupied Ukrainian territory. In March 2024, Chinese diplomats reiterated Beijing's position, saying that the conflict would have to be resolved through negotiations that need to take Russian interests into account. Blinken arrived in Shanghai on a three-day visit to China from April the 24th to the 26th to pressure China to stop its companies from contributing to the development of Russia's defense industry. UN confirms that Russia hit Kharkiv with North Korean missile. The United Nations has confirmed the use of North Korean Hwasong-11 missiles by Russia. In particular, they were used to strike Kharkiv in January, according to Reuters. According to the agency, in early April, three observers monitoring the implementation of UN sanctions against North Korea, which prohibit the import and export of military technology to the North Korea, traveled to Ukraine to inspect missile debris. They found no evidence that the missile was made in Russia. 
Such a location, if the missile was under control of Russian forces, would probably indicate procurement by nationals of the Russian Federation, the observers wrote in a report available to the agency. As it was stated in the report, Ukraine's information indicates that the missile was launched from the territory of Russia. On January the 2nd of this year, the Russian forces launched a missile attack on Kharkiv. Afterward, the spokesman for the Kharkiv Regional Prosecutor's Office, Dmitro Chubenko, told reporters that the enemy used a North Korean-made missile to launch the attack. Oleksandr Kovalenko, a military and political observer of the Information Resistance Group, said in a commentary to RBC Ukraine that Russia could have used a Hwasong-11 missile. Hwasong-11 is a short-range ballistic missile first tested in May 2019. It follows a quasi-ballistic trajectory and visually resembles the Russian Iskander-M leading analysts to consider the Hwasong-11 a potential copy. According to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, estimates the missile can carry a warhead weighing 500 kilograms up to a distance of 450 kilometers or a lighter one up to 690 kilometers. Its length is approximately 7.5 meters, diameter 0.95 meters, with a total mass of 3,415 kilograms. In the terminal phase of flight, the Hwasong-11 is capable of maneuvering, complicating interception. Its trajectory could pose a problem for missile defense systems. The use of fins for maneuvering complicates interception prediction. It remains unknown whether the North Korean missile has sophisticated guidance systems for accurate targeting after evasion maneuvers.